National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is presented by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Gator Zone. We are in the Brian Cornball foyer of the Heavener Football Complex where there is a new regime taking over here for the Florida football program. Dan Mullen, now the 27th head coach at the University of Florida. The same old regime here, Gareth Gutierrez, Jeff Cardozo here with you. Excited to bring you a uh, sleeveless edition of Gator Zone. It's December, there's a lot of sun, it's like 80 degrees. You can't ask for anything better. It is perfect here in Gainesville and we're hanging out with a few national championship yeah. trophies of which Dan Mullen was a part of two of these. We hope he brings us a lot more here in the coming future. So here's Mick Hubert catching up with Dan Mullen on his first day in Gainesville. Well, the more things change, perhaps the more they stay the same, but there is a change because Dan Mullen is now the head coach of the Florida Gators. Dan, great to see you again. Great to be here. I'm, I'm thrilled to be back, you know, I mean, it's so exciting. I'll be back here in this stadium, be back here uh, in the state of Florida and, and be back here with the Gator Nation. I'm so excited. Well, you had the four great years here when you were here with the championships and you have to have some unbelievably pleasant memories. We do. We, we had we had a lot of fun, you know, a lot of a lot of great memories of friends, uh, you know, coached a lot of great players while we were here. We had a lot of fun out there on that field there and, and winning a couple of championships. And, uh, uh, you know, it, that's that's stuff that stays with you for life. Your life has really changed over the last nine years, I'm sure. It, it is different, right? You just said I, I left with a pregnant wife and, and a dog named Heisman, and now the, the dog's coming back, but so are an eight-year-old and a five-year-old and, and an entire family. Yeah, and, and that, that, makes, that makes things so much different, doesn't it, for you, when you wake up every day knowing that that responsibility, is, as well as winning football games, it's a big, big deal in life. It is. It's special. You know, it's so fun. I mean, you know, I, I, I have two main responsibilities in life, which is which is my family, you know, and now this football program and, and getting us back to where we need to be. I'm sure for you, the last 48 hours has been a real whirlwind, hasn't it? it it's been pretty crazy. It, it is, uh, you know, it was, it, you know, started after Thanksgiving. I had some family in town. I thought, okay, I'm going to be able to put my feet up. Let's relax. Let's enjoy watching some football. And then the mayhem started, and then uh, from once that mayhem started uh, to the uh, the excitement that starts to build uh, to the task at hand and all the things we have to get done, both you know getting the staff, meeting the team, getting the program where we want it, and recruiting all of that. Uh, it's been a whirlwind, and uh, but I don't think I've stopped smiling. Well, you come back as the most experienced head coach the Florida Gators have ever hired. No one's had more head coaching experience than yourself. Well, that's a lot of pressure you just put on me right there, I guess. Because uh, there's been an awful lot of great head coaches that come through here. So uh, I just hope I can live up to their standards. Well, you know, you're in the Western Division. You played the Gators only one time. But from afar, you've looked at the program and, and, and you've seen uh, where, we, where we've been and where we need to go. And, and I'm sure you're, you can't wait to get back on that road to, to get us back to that level. Well, it, it is. And to me, you know what, uh, and I think for all the families, it's about the consistency. I think, you know, I mean, I, I, I be watching from afar, uh, there's been some, some up years and some down years, uh, but you know what, I know what the expectations are here, which is, uh, you know, to compete for a championship every year. And, uh, and that's where we want to get this program back to where, uh, you know, we, we, we want to keep the up years and, and maybe keep them going higher, but we, we want to get rid of some of those down years and, uh, uh, and get, everybody, uh, get this program where, where, where the Gator Nation expects it. We're at the top of the swamp. We're actually in the Champions Club. What a great place for you to be in the Champions Club as you try and get these Gators back to being the champions. It's fun to be here. You know what? I mean, this view, you, you go back, brings back so many memories. And you know what? I mean, I, I, I got to be the, the luckiest person around. You know, I, I, I just, I, I got hired. I, I love being a football coach. Your dream to be a football coach since I've been, been young and be in the game of football. And here I am at the Premier University and in the Premier Football Program in America. Dan, thank you so much. Thank you. Great, it's great to, to be you. back. Dan Mullen, the head coach of the Florida Gators. Thank you, Mick, and I personally am really excited to have Coach yeah. Mullen back. He was here three of the four years I was in school. They were really successful years, so I'm really excited to have Coach Mullen back on the sideline. And here at the University of Florida, he has some fantastic resources available at his disposal. Well, you say that word fantastic. We all know how great 
Gatorade is. You love drinking it on a daily basis, whether you're on the field or heck, just in everyday life. You just ran a, a marathon last weekend and you sipped down a whole bunch of Gatorade. So it helps everybody and uh, got me some muscles back in the day. That's how good it is. And Brady Ackerman is going to tell you about a certain truck now on campus that is going to make these student athletes really, really excited. When it comes to hydration and replenishing electrolytes lost during competition, the University of Florida and Gatorade have been setting the standard by refueling athletes of all shapes and sizes for a long time, since 1965 in fact. Gatorade also comes in all shapes and sizes as well, and now it's gone mobile for the Gators. We met with Gatorade and they were talking about you know, what areas we kind of wanted to prove on, areas where we thought we could get better or grow in, and recovery was one of them. Beforehand, it was us building a station every single day, so they kind of came up with this idea of making a fueling station on wheels. We met back and forth on it, making design plans, trying to see, you know, what direction we really wanted to take it. This state-of-the-art fueling truck is currently the only one of its kind and another example of Florida's commitment to supporting the competitive excellence of the Gator athletes. The faster these Gators hydrate and refuel, the faster they'll recover. The sooner you get recovery in, the better because you want that process to get started as soon as possible. The good thing about it too is that they're walking back to the locker room. It gives them time to drink it, to finish it, instead of just getting hit right before the locker room going straight into showers. So it's kind of like the perfect setup. We wanted it out there. We wanted them to get it immediately after, have time to consume it before they took showers and were headed on their way. Prior to the fuel truck's debut, athletic trainers would have set up post-practice stations for the Gator team, but without a lot of hydration options. Not anymore. So now we have blenders, we have a freezer, we have a fridge, we have counter space. We have lots of options to make things individualized. It's essentially like our fuel bar in the weight room on wheels. Inside, we are gonna be able to make individualized shakes, customize things, be able to do recovery more efficiently, more effectively. We've got everything from being able to add variety, not the same thing every day to keep things interesting, to also being able to customize stuff. So the smoothies are gonna be helpful, blenders, we have state of the art, you know, fridge, freezer, everything looks super cool, which is half really the battle too, because it keeps our athletes interested. They come out and they're like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. So they come up, they get something, they interact with us, and it's been a really good process so far. And one thing is for sure, you will not miss it at practice. You know, it makes a huge statement, and we have coaches that are even making sure that guys are grabbing stuff. They really know that the time, the effort, this big truck is all there to help them get recovery in. And so I think the guys are able to see, wow, this is something I need to be doing. This is something Gatorade's taking initiative in. Oh man, it's, it's awesome. It's like something you've never seen before, coming out of practice and then have a big old fuel truck sitting there waiting on you with all the shake, like the Gatorade bars. They love it. I'm sure it's on all of their My Stories and Snapchats because they just think it's awesome. Um, I'll even let them come inside and check it out and things like that and they're really excited. I kind of walk by and probably put it on Snapchat, coming from class or, or tutoring and walk in to practice. The obvious benefit for the Gatorade fuel truck is its mobility and while it's only at football right now, there are plans to expand its reach next season. In the future, we might look at expanding it and trying new things with it. For now, we're going to keep it at practice and make sure we have the system set up smooth sailing before we start adding on more stuff. But that is the uh, you know benefit of it being on wheels is you can take it anywhere you'd like. Gatorade, fueling Florida student athletes since 1965 and now doing it bigger and better than any school in the country. Thank you, Brady. Watching all that Gatorade made me really thirsty. So cheers to Gatorade. No doubt. Um, it's really good stuff. It's fantastic the way it goes down. You can see how nice and smooth it is. And that's pretty impressive right there. We'll have more Gator Zone right after this. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade. Win from within. Welcome back to Gator Zone, hanging out here at James G. Presley Stadium, site of the Florida soccer team, who had a really good year this year. No doubt. 
They fell just short of the final four. They fell in the round of eight at yeah. South Carolina. But it was a great season nonetheless. And this year's team, it wasn't just one or two players that made a big impact. It was the whole team, real team effort. And that's why you have success. That's what Becky Burley wanted, and that's exactly what this team gave her and the reason why Kristen Cardano ended up coming to Gainesville all the way from Tulsa. And unfortunately, she got hurt middle part of the year, so not a part of the championship run, but no regular season success if they didn't have her. So uh, here's a little more about the person that finished off her career as a Gator. Kristen Cardano's senior season was going great. She was a leader on and off the field, and her experience on defense was key for the Gators. With postseason right around the corner, Cardano was looking forward to going out on top with her team. And then the unthinkable happened. So when I came into the game, I was already, as they say, in the red zone. Like I was extremely hyped. So I had started to get up more as a center back, and uh, I got into a tackle. A girl went in cleats up into my shin. At that point, Kristen was taken out of the game and was told she needed stitches. But the Gators were down two to nothing to in-state rival FSU, and Cardano knew she wasn't going out like that. So with her leg bandaged up, she approached Coach Burley and said she was ready to go back in if they needed her. And Becky was like, oh, okay. So then I went back in, but the problem with that was I was really intense on like a new level. So when she got the ball, the same girl, I had too much energy. So I went too fast at her. She actually cut and I was not expecting it. I already planted with my left foot. And my Left knee kept traveling one way, freaked out, heard the pop, pulled it the other way, and then I heard the other pop. And uh, when I went down, I knew that was it. Like, I knew that was probably gonna be my last time on the field. Cardano's biggest fear was later confirmed. She tore her ACL and MCL. She would not be able to finish her Gator career on the field, but she soon learned her team still needed her and relied on her leadership. And I now have accepted the role that I have to play, and I have accepted that like I'll never be able to play again as a Gator, but like I gotta do what my team needs. The first game that I missed in Auburn, they're like, come on, like get in the group of 11, like on the field. So I will always now, like I'm part of that 11 when we go out there. So that means like ugh, a ton to me. Before her injury, Cardano was averaging 86.4 minutes played per game in her redshirt senior season. With her quick feet and fearless attitude, Kristen had become a staple on Florida's defense. Sometimes I'm just like, I don't know how she does it. Like, she's so fast on the field. And I mean, and if someone makes a mistake, she always is there to fix it or clean it up. So I think she's just always everywhere. When I watch her, I'm like, I don't know how she gets to those places in that quick of time, but she always does. I'm definitely more of a uh, hardcore player. I definitely play with my heart on my sleeve, and I'm more of like an intense player. The Florida soccer program molded Kristen into the player she is today. And because of that, Cardano hopes that her dreams of becoming a professional soccer player may soon be a reality. Through the years, I've learned more and more about soccer that I would have never known if I didn't come to the University of Florida. They teach you over and beyond what you need to know. I have no doubt in my mind that I'll already be ahead of the game. Her Gator career may not have ended the way she planned, but Kristen Cardano knows her injury does not define her time here at Florida. Her tenacity, relentless attitude, and always have your back mentality left an impact on this team that will not be forgotten. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Granath. Thank you, Shelby, and congrats to Kristen on a great career here at the University of Florida. We wish she could have finished out her career being healthy, but something really cool for her this year, she was credited with the assist on Deanne Rose's first career goal, so that's a pretty cool accolade. That is cool. I didn't even realize that. So you learn something every day, and you know what we learned last year? That Brandy Johnson is a legit track star here at the University of Florida. Great freshman season. She does some sprints. She does some hurdles, which... We might even do that a little bit later, but uh, here's a little bit more about hopefully what is going to be a great sophomore sensational season. Say that fast three times. Brandy Johnson has always had a love for the track. 
The 2016 Virginia Gatorade Girls Track and Field Athlete of the Year was highly recruited by Coach Holloway and the Gators after they witnessed her fire and passion. I chose Florida because of the coaches and the atmosphere here. The coaches really took an interest in me and really wanted to prove that they wanted me to excel as much as I wanted to. And throughout the season last year, they really proved that during the recruiting process, as much as they believed in me, they still believed in me that year. Johnson chose the University of Florida for many reasons, but one that was particularly important was Coach Holloway. During his 14 years as a head coach of the Gators, he has proven to be one of the best coaches in the business. Knowing that he's produced so many hurdlers and sometimes even taking girls or guys who weren't even hurdlers coming into college and then hurdling at the end, um, it really boosted my confidence knowing that like anything that I was doing hurdle-wise, like he could fix and I knew that he would have the solution, he would have the answer to make me a better athlete. Whenever we watch her compete, the bigger the competition, the more she raised her level of intensity and she wasn't afraid, she didn't back down to anything or anybody. In March of 2017, Johnson's season was off to a blazing start, but when May rolled around, things didn't turn out quite as planned. It was extremely frustrating. I didn't know, I didn't know how to handle it. Uh, since I had never been in a situation before, I never knew like how to cope with the things that I was going through and not like, you know, being an alternate on a relay and not making it to finals. Like, I never experienced things like that, so I didn't know how to cope with them. And it was just like, for me, it was extremely stressful and frustrating. But it was, it was a step in my track career, which I needed. We, we had a good talk right after the NCAA championships and I just challenged her to be Brandy and challenged her to believe in her God-given talents and uh, she was kind of doubting herself and, and I just asked her, I said, look, you know, let's, let's just give it a try. Johnson credits her success of overcoming some obstacles to the support from her coaches and is looking forward to carrying that positivity into the 2018 season. And even the day we had the talk, you know, she, Coach Walty, and I sat down and talked and Coach Mann was there as well and that day in practice we saw something better and I think probably the moment for me was when the gun went off in the 100 hurdles at the at the junior meet. You know, I saw a different passion, a different fire. I saw her charge to the first hurdle like she meant business. And so that was that was a big, that was the first sign for me. Looking ahead to 2018, Johnson is challenging herself to be the best athlete she can be and is excited to see what is in store for her and her team. This year I'm just looking for improvement and looking for the, um, being able to do what I'm supposed to do on the track, what I was recruited for which I feel like will happen this year. I've learned a lot last year. Um, and just continue to be the athlete that I know I can be. For Gator Zone, I'm Leanne Kite. Thank you, Leanne. Sometimes on Gator Zone, we have to make do when we can't find things. We couldn't find a hurdle. So with this first ever career hurdle attempt of a bench here on Gator Zone, Jeff Cardozo. <laughs> Take that, Brandy. More Gator Zone after this. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade. Win from within. Welcome back to Gator Zone. Gareth, Jeff, still hanging out here with you inside the basketball practice facility. And we started the show hanging out with some football trophies, so thought we'd move over to some basketball trophies. Yeah, those were uh, pretty sweet. And uh, it's really cool, because everywhere you go on campus, there's trophies everywhere. That's how legit the University of Florida athletics are. And you know what else is cool? The way the student athletes give back to the community. And it's the holiday season, so certainly a lot going on charitable-wise. And they decided to do a little food drive, and it uh, was something special. Here's Jacob with how the men's basketball team gave back to the community. For the eighth year in a row, the University Athletic Association and Gator Student Athletes teamed up with St. Augustine Catholic Church to make an impact in the Gainesville community. This is our eighth annual holiday uh, help to the poor. We, uh, we've been doing it ever since uh, Urban Meyer was the, the head coach of football. Uh, he approached us because he wanted to give back to the community. And, uh, and he gave us a very generous donation and we went out, we bought some groceries and we were able to help uh, I think that first year we helped about 400, maybe maybe 450 needy families. And each year we we kind of upped our game, and we uh, we've done more and more to help out uh, the people in our community. This year we were particularly focusing on the needs of the homeless uh, that are served by Grace Marketplace here in Gainesville. We were here from about 10:30 this morning, setting up in the uh, in this area. Uh, the athletics brought over a lot of clothing to to give out. 
Um, we started sorting through that, sizing it, and, and putting it out on the table so that we could make this go as smoothly as possible. It means a lot to me. I come from a, a area of a lot of broken homes, where I'm from in Philadelphia, so I'm used to seeing a lot of people who need, you know, extra food or a shelter or anything like that. So the opportunity to give back it really means a lot. It like makes you feel a little bit better, especially like coming around holiday time. Um, we start to feel for those families who are a little bit less fortunate. They're a little giving back to the community because uh, not only do they come out and support me on the field and the teammates and every other sport at the University of Florida, so if they support me, I should be able to support them. So, you know, a helping hand goes a long way. For people to, to come out and to take their time to help people that they, aren't, they really don't know, um, they, they're not going to be, they may not even ever have a face to face contact with, but, uh, but to know that we could somehow be. Um, be a bridge between uh, between the volunteers and the people who need uh, need their help. Well, that um, that kind of reminds me of what Christmas is really all about. The Gators have made a big impact in the community all year, but there's no better time to give back than the holiday season. For Gator Zone, I'm Jacob Lovelace. Thank you, Jacob. You know, it's time to move inside one of these gymnasiums because on the other side of the break, top plays better get there first. Jeff, last time we were over here, I was putting on a three exhibition. You were staying pretty close. So how about a game of horse today? Of course, University of Florida style, so gator. That they do. So uh, that means you're going to get a G once I hit this three. Today's top plays are brought to you by Nike. Shields it. Really good look. Finds Ballard underneath to reverse this. Take it away. Flip up ahead, and that's going to do it. Chioza, the layup. Pass Lanier, set to the outside to Botkin. Joseph blocks it! Hello! Gators have the lead, 16-15. It still is in play. Gators go right to Shina. Shina buries it, the Gators stay alive. 26-24 in set four. Montre goes right again. Shina swings again, and Shina kills it. Shina oh Joseph goodness. gets the kill to end it here tonight. During those top plays, Jeff has put on an absolute exhibition. I have not been able to keep up. He has no letters. I have my G, my A, my T, my O, and he just hit a behind the back shot from the free throw line. So let's see if I can stave off. Here we go. Here we go. All right. That's it. Whoa. You almost hit the rim. You know, so there's I, worse uh, things than being a gator. Okay. So I'm a gator, you're a gator. I'm fine with that. Valiant effort. Even though that didn't work out well, uh, you did well on the show. So uh, very proud of you and hope everybody else liked it. A lot of great features once again. It's uh, getting to be holiday time, but still no quit in all these gator athletics, is there? No, it is not. You can follow the gators on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Keep up on everything University of Florida. Yeah, Mitch did a great job filming us today. He's my partner. Gareth Gutierrez. I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you all next time.